Have you ever wondered how all the chemical elements are made? Then join me as we are lifting all the Stardust secrets to understand the cosmic origin of the chemical elements. Let's talk about spectroscopy. This is the technique we use to observe stars in order to figure out their chemical composition. Now you've probably all seen a rainbow. I really hope you have. <laughs> and what happens in a rainbow? Well, white light is, comes through a little um, water droplet and it gets split up into the rainbow colors. And we do the same thing with a spectrograph mounted at a telescope. We take the starlight and we split it up into its rainbow colors. Now, what we see when, when, we, when we do this is not just the rainbow. Actually, we see less than the rainbow because there are certain colors of the rainbow missing. So if I draw this schematically here, um, I have a rainbow and let's say I have um, blue here and then green and yellow. What I will see also is that there is a big line, something like this, missing here and it's black. And then there will be a few things here and a couple there and you know many really really thin ones in between that are hard to see. And uh, that missing part, or those missing parts here, they contain all the information that we want. It's actually not the colors, it's such, it's what's missing um, from there. Now how can we understand that? If we uh, come back to our stars and look at stellar surface, let's draw a surface layer here, um, and the core is here. Uh, we know that nuclear fusion is going on in the core, so it's really hot there and, and energy comes out of the core in the form of hot photons. So we have these photons escaping from the core and they come, they pass through this outer layer here. Of course, we are sitting here with our telescope um, observing the, the stellar surface, right, as I mentioned uh, in a previous section that we, we can't look in, into the core, we can only observe the surface here. And specifically what we're observing is we're observing all the photons that come off the surface. So in this outer layer we have um, hydrogen and helium atoms because that's what the star is mostly made of. Hydrogen, helium. But of course uh, there are, unless we're talking about the very first stars, but um, that's a separate story. There will be other atoms in here, iron, magnesium, carbon, oxygen. And so what happens is that uh, all elements, hydrogen and helium as well, plus uh, iron, magnesium and so forth, they absorb, so let's draw this here, they absorb photons with a very specific energy or wavelengths that's equivalent. And so what comes out of here, here there's one that gets absorbed, all these get absorbed and then there are some that pass through. So what we see here is all the ones that came through and of course not the ones that were absorbed by these atoms. Um, and so that's exactly what we see here. The colors uh, is everything that came through and then the black lines here are the ones um, that are missing. So we can see what's missing. All of the, you know, all the ion atoms here, they have absorbed all the photons at a specific color, at a specific wavelength. And so that's missing. Um, however, this is actually not entirely black black. There's only a certain uh, amount being absorbed, not perhaps not completely. And so what we can measure is when we take a cross cut through this, we are going to get something that looks like this. Uh, and uh, so there's a strong absorption here and less absorption here. And let's say that this is our calcium. That's a calcium line here. And these are three magnesium lines. These are two sodium lines. Then we can see from these line strength here um, what the abundance of the magnesium atoms here, oh, here is another one, <laughs> um, is. So line strength here corresponds to abundance of magnesium atoms in the outer atmosphere. And uh, 
The nice thing, of course, is that we, uh, when we want to find the most metal poor stars, so the oldest stars, then we want to look for stars whose spectra have very weak lines, let's say like this, because that means that only little calcium, magnesium and sodium were actually in the, uh, are present in the star, which means that the star must have formed at a really early time when the cycle of chemical enrichment had only gone round a few times. So this is, um, this is the secret of spectroscopy, um, absorption line spectroscopy. We, we take these kinds of data here and we measure the line strength. We measure how much is, uh, is uh, present here. And uh, with the help of computer programs we can, and a whole bunch of physics, we can turn these line strength here into uh, an abundance in the stellar surface and that tells us about uh, the formation time of these stars. <laughs>